Sometimes art is prophetic, and sometimes I don't know how to offset it. The words too authentic to constantly do what I do and augment it. Y'all talk a big game, can't tell if y'all meant it. In seconds turns to minutes, the ticket will tell all. Will you hold firm or steadily fall? Will you conform with the ways of the world? Or will you give the world everything that you are? Make them fuckers move around you, kind of like sound do. Break out of everything that they had you bound to. You got knocked down, ho. Get ready for round two. It's round two. Get ready for round two. Come back, run rap, run laps around these cats. Jump back, kiss myself, still keeping me intact. Weird and black, they for that. Hold up, steer it back. Weird and black, they revere that. Yup, you hear that? Turnstile, switch it up. Young nigga raised hard, he learned not to give a fuck. Young nigga came far, still never give enough. Coming with the flavor, delicious, so she lick it up. Bust down, stick it up, I put it down, so pick it up. Scut town, save yours, done some till he shift to musk. Stench so stank that the shit compare itself to us. Crud so dank, make your face much a dripping, cuz. Club go shake when the bass get to hitting ya. They ain't really hearing us, but they gon' feel something when the way is paved clear enough. I don't fear nothing but the fate, it's God's really not. Well, fuck it, Got the world in my hands and that's real enough Fuck it, got the world in my hands Gold forms to touch, might just spend it all One time to give it all to us uh, yeah, give, give it all, all to us, us. This that hip hop body rock call called karate chop neo nazi nasty not feel it in my chest How could you wear that name must be automatic shame He's an automatic lame heard it from the best Fresh flow let's go plus I got a lot of heart It's necessary when you dabble in this art Grab canvas paint picture use them acrylics paint a picture so vivid The people gotta feel it like the cobber Lyrics bear fruit like robber Words spilling out of my brain like lava Spills out the top of a rock Volcano and they know that ain't right is not the one to play no I'm pay no in Mortal Kombat Cause the lyrics like plays Aim it at your juggler when I'm on stage Until you heard me spit homie you ain't heard rage On another chapter so turn a turn ah. Okay got that out my system A right on another planet dog you must have missed them When I do it how I do it's of my own volition Go make my destination even in the worst condition My crew's the Blues Brothers cause you know we on a mission and turn of the approach as I make bumping in your system. I mean, banging it and I'm still hanging it. And I got a gang of wisdom. I got a gang of rhythms. I got a lot of soul. I found the pot of gold. I'm wrapping that shit up. Gonna sell it to the globe. I got some game to give them. They don't really want, but they really need it. And I want you to succeed. I want you to be free. I want you to remove every obstacle from being what you truly want to be. I truly want to see. And I can only lead by example. So here's a sample for me so get up
used to want drinking beer. I'm drinking water. Two touchdowns a game. Yes, in the game. You're tripping. How you hide the no, this Super Bowl I don't know what we're doing in the front office, man. Twiddling our fucking dick. <laughs> Ryan, I just need you to drink this. Wide no. <laughs> <laughs> receiver trivia. Yeah, that's what she said. Her. Fuck. Her. Upset. Are those crutches? You can see Ryan's crutches in the <laughs> 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 What is going on, folks? Welcome back to After Further Review. This is episode 181. I am your co-host, Jalen Brown. I'm your favorite co-host that you don't give a shit about, Malin Dennis. And I'm your other great co-host, all the way from uh, my Sarasota penthouse, Nestor. Yes, he's coming at you from his balcony today, folks. Take a step outside, get some fresh air. <laughs> we don't have a, a a first half guest this week. Uh, they actually both canceled on us. Had an original guest a couple of days ago. He will possibly be on next week, but we'll see. And then June also canceled on us. So yeah, he's painting. <laughs> We're just getting stood up this week, folks. But hey, we still got the OGs here, first and we're not going anywhere. So. That. Now, so that has to be the, the skinniest balcony I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I could fit on that thing. It's uh, probably it's the bathroom uh, balcony. Good Lord. <laughs> it's probably no bigger than my balcony. So, for whatever that's worth. It's like a cruise ship balcony. They're like, we'll sell you a room for $2,000 and it has a door that opens up to outside, but it doesn't mean you can step outside. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, do you want to open up the show with our usual tradition, taking a cheers? I will do something. Cheers, gentlemen. Sponsor me. Sponsor me, Stella. So you, uh, what are you sipping on there tonight, Jalen? I am sipping some... Gosling's rum. I'm trying to get rid of the last bit of this. I'm still, How about uh, yourself? I just, I just poured my last of the Bonded and Ryan the Jack, so I'm going to have to do a second one for the... Yeah. But I am excited, though, because sometimes I like a little light beer. There you go. So the, the, the summer shandy. Did you get that Publix? Nice. Yep, I won't get one, baby. Yes, sir. I, I saw that there the other there. day. <laughs> that yep. time of year again. Even though it's, uh, you know, I think it's rained three inches today. I think. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. For folks that are new to the show, uh, we talk NBA. We talk NFL. We do this every Wednesday night at 930 Eastern time. Uh, if you want to come hang with your boys on a Wednesday night, I'm sure you got nothing else going on in your life. Hey, it's the perfect place to come uh, Come talk ball. Uh, if you are only listening to the show or not aware, fast way to get to us on YouTube is click the first link in your podcast description. It'll be taken right here. Give the stream a like. Subscribe to the channel. That way you can be notified just in case you forget when we're live. And yeah, besides that, thanks you for all the, the support throughout the week. And we're going to get into the first topic of the week. So I decided that it's time to play a little game of contender or pretender when it comes to the NBA right now. And I've listed, I think, eight teams here of primarily the, the better teams around the NBA. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're kind of at that, that point of the season. We're about to hit the playoffs, and some teams are rising up, and it looks like some teams are kind of selling right now. So I figured that now is a good time to, to go through and see what we think about all these teams. Um, so if we're going to start off with the best team in the NBA, the Boston Celtics, uh, Nestor, let's start with you. Do you think the Celtics are a legit contender or a pretender at the end of the day? No, I, I mean, I don't think they are pretenders by any, any means. Um, they are legit contenders. 
the most, in my opinion, the most legit contender in the NBA right now. Um, there's just question marks, right? Because of they need a, they kind of need a leader when it comes to that, you know, that final round or the finals. They're gonna need that, so they're gonna have to come up with that. Otherwise, you know, they're gonna run into some issues like they did last season, season before that. But for me, they're the most legit contender in the NBA right now. They're the most complete team. So yeah, go ahead, Malin. I mean, when you're when you're talking about a team that's the only team that's clinched a playoff spot so far, they're six games better than everybody else. Um, they're thirty-two and three at home. No other team is is won thirty games so far. Uh, I think Denver's one game, or I think Denver's one twenty-nine. So yeah, they have to be a contender. They do worry me though, Jalen. They they concern me right now because they can't guard in the paint. Um, I don't know why teams keep up throwing threes against them and try to like play into the type of offense they want to play. I mean, prolific scoring. Um, but they can't guard in the paint, and they keep losing games. That they should win a little bit down the stretch. I say keep. They've only lost a total of fifteen, but that one to the Hawks was just yeah unnecessary. Un- you're you're up thirty. You said thirty. I thought at one point I was watching it and I was looking. I was going between uh tourney games too, uh with March Madness, and I think the most I saw they were up twenty six. Um, and then I saw they were, like, up 16 in the third. And then I saw that they were up 10 in the fourth. And uh, I was switching back and forth. And then I was like, you money, we lost. And he started laughing so goddamn bad. <laughs> so he thinks that a 57 and 15 team is a pretender. Um, I, I think he really does. Uh, yeah, mainly it because seems that way. They can't guard in the paint. Because they can't mm. guard in the paint right now. Uh, no defense in the paint. But to me, the biggest question mark I'm going to have is going to be when we hit the playoffs. Uh, because I'm still not convinced that Jalen Brown is not more clutch than Jason Tatum. I think Jason Tatum is the best basketball player uh, in the NBA, or top three, or three quarters, three and a half quarters. Um, but what happens when you get five, six minutes left in the fourth? I swear to God, he disappears way more than he should. And I've said it so many times, for someone to claim to be a disciple of Kobe Bryant, have that Mamba mentality, man, I mean, show up. And we're going to need a decisive leader, like Nestor said. We can't have our <laughs> best player go absent in the fourth quarter and Jalen Brown be the most clutch person in the playoffs. It just creates drama and confusion and chaos. I don't like it. I hope they shore that up, but I still think they're the best team in the league. Yeah, I of course think that they're a contender, but I echo what you were just saying there with uh, Tatum being the best in the NBA for the first three and a half ish quarters, uh, because when the game when games are tight, there definitely is some confusion on who should be doing what, and it's really sad because that's been the case I mean, for you know since Tatum's been in in the NBA, and you would think that they would have that worked out by now. Uh, but for whatever reason, it's it's still not the case, and it's just really scary because it's like you're not gonna blow out every single team, especially in the postseason. There's gonna be tight games, so it's like, what are we gonna do come down the stretch? Because someone's gotta take over, and you would think it'd be Tatum, but he just for whatever reason he just does not usually do that. He's gotta dominate an entire game. He can't for whatever reason just switch it on for the last few minutes. It's one of those things with Boston to where I don't have any problem seeing them going to the finals. In fact, I expect them to come out of the East right now. What my what my concern is is how many games are they going to be pushed in these series that they have no business having to play? How many game sixes? How many game sevens? They've done this the last two playoffs. If you're going to get to the finals and you're going to end up playing a team like Denver, which I think Denver's going to end up coming out of the West with the Joker, and we just got done saying they can't play interior defense, you at least better have your legs under you. Yeah. Um, so so that, that concerns me. I don't want them to go back again and then lose again. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, next team, I 
think it's Cleveland. Yes. Uh, next three, the, the Cavs are contenders or pretenders? Uh, I, uh, it's kind of difficult because I, I know they'll, they'll do well in the playoffs, but as far as getting to the finals, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, they're contenders because they, they, they hustle. I, I love their hustle. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is, is a beast, but as far as, you know, getting to the finals, uh, Opinion. Malin. Um, I okay. So contender meaning that they have a shot at the finals, right? Okay, pretender. Yeah. Um, I think they could do a little bit of a headway in the playoffs. I think they're. I'm not even going to say that Cleveland's up and coming. I think this is the best that Cleveland is going to be. I think Cleveland has the ability to be stuck in the four to five seed in the East for as long as they keep this team constructed. Uh, get to the playoffs, great story. Um, but I don't see them jumping. I mean, hell, like New York is right there with them right now. And I think that New York is better constructed to become a contender, even though I don't think they are either. I don't know. If, I forget if they're in the thing. Uh, but yeah, per, per, pretender. I just don't think they have a shot. Me neither. Uh, they made some noise last year in the playoffs, and they've improved the roster a, a bit this year. Um, but when you like seriously compare them to, say, Boston or Milwaukee, it's like uh, when it comes down to, to crunch time, I can't see them doing anything. I, I do think they're going to be kind of stuck in a purgatory, like you were saying, Malin, in this middle to upper echelon of the Eastern Conference for the next few years, unless they can go get another star to match with Donovan Mitchell, uh, which we'll see if that happens. But as they're currently constructed on just leaning on him and then filling the rest of the roster with a bunch of just good, solid players, kind of stuck in, in their own mud. So they'll make some noise, but I think Eastern Conference Finals is the absolute ceiling for that team. Uh, next team, we've got the Bucks. Go ahead, Nestor. Um, pretenders, absolutely <laughs> pretenders. Bad coaching. Dame isn't the solution. I want to say uh, that they were looking for. Um, defense not there at all. Um, so I just expect uh, Giannis to just uh, burn out. And then we're just going to see them plummet, and it could be at any at any point in the playoffs. So yeah, pretenders. Malin. Um, I you got to have at least two contenders in the East. Uh, so I'm going to say contender, just because I think that they're going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, they gave the Celtics a little bit of fit the last time they played. Uh, yeah. Celtics were kind of having their way with them, but then they do their normal third, fourth quarter thing. And uh, Milwaukee's one of those sneaky teams that can take advantage of that when Boston likes to take their foot off the gas for some god awful fucking reason. <laughs> um, and like I said, if you can't if you can't guard in the paint, they got Giannis. Um, and now I get it. I know that Milwaukee just lost to the Lakers. I know that. And the crazy thing is, is it. Davis looked better than Giannis in that game. It's wild how he can do that five times a year. <laughs> um, but that three that Dame hit, it, I think it was the end of regulation to pull it into to pull yeah. it into overtime. That's the type of thing that scares me about Milwaukee. They still have that. They still got that dagger option in the back pocket if Boston were to fuck around and try to find out. Uh, that they could pull out on, on some games. So that does make me a, a little bit nervous. So I'm going to say contender, but it's more out of respect and obligation that somebody besides Boston has to have a chance to come out of the East, I figure. Yeah, I, I also think they are a contender because of how Boston plays 
you know, Boston can let anybody back into a game, unfortunately. However, I don't, I think Milwaukee could be a much stronger contender with a different coach and a better Chris Middleton. I think they're just like a, a improved Middleton and improved coach away from being like right up there with Boston, unfortunately. Uh, but the, like they have two of the best rim protectors in the NBA with Giannis and Brooke Lopez. Dame, I think he he's is more or less what they needed. Um, but I think like the, the bigger problem is that they just need that other solid wing player, which Middleton should be, but he's very touch and go. So, uh, Contender at the end of the day, but um, not a s- too strong one. So, yeah. Um, all right. Next team, Philadelphia. Go ahead, Nestor. I prefer to have them as contenders because of MB and then Tyrese Maxey. And they can't possibly be <laughs> coached any worse than, um, you know, the Bucks with Doc Rivers. So, uh, I, I I put them as contenders. I think they're they're a better team. They have less issues. Uh, they're more consistent. Um, so I think when Embiid comes back, they're gonna do good. I mean, like I said, Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, um, Mombamba, great team. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about Mombamba. Go ahead, Malin. <laughs> Yeah, he says that. Meanwhile, Maxi just fell down on an inbound pass <laughs> and let the <laughs> let the Clippers go off. <laughs> like a minute and a half left in the. Oh, that's awesome. The Shaq effect. Um, okay, so so hear me out on this. This is why I'm saying pretender on these people. Okay, which might sound weird because at some point Embiid's gonna come back, right? At least we think he's gonna come back. I believe yeah. he's gonna come back. I'm hoping he does. Uh, just for ratings sake. So why would I put Milwaukee as a contender and Philly as a pretender if, you know, they got Embiid and Milwaukee has Giannis and the Celtics can't guard in the paint? I can't back it up with numbers. I can just tell you what I feel is that when Embiid gets hurt this late in the year and he comes back, I feel that he's more inconsistent. I don't know if it's um, you know, he's not in game shape. I don't know if he just gets tired out, but he'll have a great game and then he'll have two bad games. Um, and so I I think Maxie's great, but you couldn't you couldn't win with this squad last year. I don't really feel that they've done anything to prove this year that they're a better team than they were last year. Um Boston has gotten considerably better. Um and so at least at least Milwaukee and Boston were making moves to try to better the squad. They just try to run it back. It almost feels like with the same people. Uh, so, so I think that they're they're pretenders. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength tonight, Malin, because for the same exact reason, I feel like Embiid coming back this late in the year just isn't going to work out. Like he's either going to dare I say re-injure himself, or I don't know. It's just kind of hard to get back into uh basketball form basketball shape uh especially playoff basketball just you know at the drop of a dime and the rest of the team just is not really great construction there like they don't have really much going on you know they they rely on maxi yeah and when Embiid is there it's a good one to punch but that's really all they have i'm not really impressed with their bench um nick nurse seems to be doing a solid job, but I mean, look what they've done without Embiid in the lineup. Which, nothing. They just yeah. dropped a bunch of spots, so can't be doing that great of a I'll job. I tell you what, though, I feel like Philly has more jerseys, yeah, than anybody else. They've got a new jersey every God. week. They're, they're wearing a different jersey. Yeah, city. I love how they still call Philly the city of brotherly love. It threw snowballs at Santa back in the eighties <laughs> in an Eagles game. Shut up. No, no love there. <laughs> it's just, so funny. Shout out to uh, Injabe. He says, uh, "Hi guys, I'm a Sixers fan. It's killing me at the moment. I haven't gotten a clue what to expect from them recently. 
uh, what's happened to Healed and uh, Eball Paul. We sorry, we look lost and unmotivated. Um, blessed from the UK. Thanks for the content. Uh, well, I, I think, yeah, I, I think what he's getting at though is that Philly they don't have the roster to compete without Embiid long term. They have players that can do spurts. So they look good when he first went out, but now they're tired. And I kind of feel like Philly's just playing uninspired ball until Embiid comes back and thinks they can just turn it on. Kind of what it's, it's like the vibe I get when I watch these games. I mean, right now the Clippers just tied it up for 44 seconds and Philly's been winning this whole game. Yeah. And by the way, uh, so I could not see your name. NBA J. I said Mbaje. <laughs> NBA J. Uh, he also says that I wouldn't be surprised if MB doesn't want to come back this season the way they're playing, which you raise a solid point. <laughs> uh, next team, we're going to switch over to the West now. Uh, the Nuggets, I mean, I'm sure we all find the Nuggets to be contenders. I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. Wow, Nestor's inside now. What the hell happened? He moved back up. Then running fucking motorcycles out there and couldn't hear myself even think. So um <laughs> no, Denver yeah, is definitely contenders. They're like Mainland said, they're the San Antonio Spurs. Uh you know, yeah. last I don't know, twelve years, on thirteen years, I don't remember. What what what's going on in that game? Oh uh he'll just uh Hit a three to put him up 107 105 with 22 seconds left. Oof. I mean, like, pro it looked like it was like three or four feet behind the arc, too. Like, just a catch and shoot. <laughs> so I was like, damn, like, Nessa was just trashing on him. And then he just goes up and pulls up from beyond the arc there. Um, uh, yeah, Den Denver has to be uh, a contender because, I mean, you're, you're, you're the reigning champs. Um, it's weird that some teams are as close as they are to Denver, but I think that Denver is probably the most postseason ready roster. Um, yeah. Even though they play the most boring brand of basketball, I said it before, they are the 2020s version of the, two, of the early 2000 Spurs. Yeah. Um, no one wants to watch them on TV unless they're playing their favorite team. Um, just like you, you're like, oh, okay, the Nuggets are probably gonna win. Joker's gonna turn red, and uh, you know it's it's fine. They're, they're probably gonna win the game, uh, but they're they they're annoyingly good at what they do. Um, so yeah, they, they got to be a contender. Yeah, I don't have much more to add to that. They are. They're very good. Um, it is nice to see like another dominant team because the past several years, like whoever's been winning the chip, it's just kind of been like a rotating door. Uh, but it's cool to see like a team who's established themselves and is like we're not just a one and done. So even if it is a boring brand of basketball, that part is nice. Uh, kind of doing it an old school way too with. Uh... And Kawhi Leonard just hit a bucket and is going to the line here, so it's tied with 15.7 seconds, and he's yeah. going to the line. The That's good that? because he let he'll hit that three right over his ass. Uh, <laughs> so it's good to redeem himself. Um, you know, like when was the last time we had a team dominating like with a big man consistently? Right. Like a big big man. Like Giannis to me is still a little bit of a hybrid. Right. A little bit. Like I'm talking like someone like the size. Of a shack now. I mean, yeah. Joker's not the shack. Nobody is, but like, just your, your center right, the is height. the biggest point of the team. Um, at it, it's refreshing. Uh, no one does pull up jumpers anymore. Uh, it's you know dunker or, or bust with the three. Uh, so it's nice to see some ball movement that uh that Denver can do. NBA J says Embiid is probably already looking for a house in New York, close to the Knicks court. You must be looking elsewhere if Philly keeps going like we are. I mean, he might be at this rate. <laughs> how many how many times is Max going to fall down, man, and draw a foul? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, All I see Maxie do in the last two minutes is fall down in this game. 
every time he tries to do something crazy and he slips <laughs> and he falls down. And then they call a foul. Commentators, Chris. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Thunder. Nestor, do you think the Thunder are contenders? Um, sure. I, I, I think they can be. I think they are. Um, the way they've turned the team around, there are a lot of people saying that they were not, like, they were just joking about the Thunder, and now we see this season, they're serious. And I think last season, they're, they're okay, too. They're pretty good. Um, SCA, um, Ted Holmgren, they got some good players. They, they built a great young team. So I think at any point, they could, we could see them in, in the in the Western Conference Finals at any point because they've just built perfectly for it. So I think they're contenders. Malin? Man, fuck the OKC. <laughs> now, God damn it. I, son of a... I hate it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we got... We got so many planes that are having issues. We have bridges falling down. And oh, I can't yeah. get fish. <laughs> and so here we are still with the thunder. Still alive and well. Um, <laughs> fuck them, but yes, they are a contender. I hate it. I hate it. I was really happy. Um, when the demise of Durant and Westbrook and all that with the Thunder, I thought I was done with this trash ass <laughs> team with the ugliest colors in the NBA with the dumbest fucking name, the stupid ass looking owner. Um, I mean, your your starting five is made of toothpicks. Um, together <laughs> at the ligaments with marshmallows. I swear to God, but the playing good ball, okay. Yeah, they're 50 and 21. They're one game behind Denver. So, yeah, they have to be a contender. Uh, but am I still hoping for something bad to happen? Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, I think that they are contenders. However, when it comes to the West, who someone's going to have to come through Denver. Like, that's just a given. Like, if you're going to get to the finals, you're going to. St- face the Nuggets at some point and uh, if they do get to the point where they're playing against Denver I don't like their chances against Denver because uh, even though they do have the the height they just don't stack up well like Denver's still just bigger than them like the Thunder are are just kind of too light and you need to look at you know Jokic Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, like those dudes, those are some big boys right there. And they're just going to back them down right into the basket. Yeah, Chet Holmgren and, and SGA, they have the height again, but they don't have the the weight class to keep up with Denver as of right now. So uh, they've got the energy. I think they can, you know, kind of run circles around pretty much anybody. But uh, when the game slows down a bit, uh, I think they're lacking the experience and the the kind of weight to outplay a Denver. Anybody else in the West, though, they could take down no problem. But I love contender. how Maxi fell down. They called a foul. Coach's challenge upheld with the coach. <laughs> LA gets the ball back, or no, actually Philly gets the ball. But Maxi's like bleeding from the lip now, like. He's doing his best Maxi pad impersonation, just catching blood. Just, all that tripping. All that, all that tripping. Now he's now. So what else? About his man, I'm bleeding out of his wound. <laughs> yeah, that's not doing the bleeding; it's catching the bleeding. Um, uh, NBA J says, uh, "I claim the Thunder to be a top four team in the West, and I'm absolutely." absolutely loving Chet's first year. The OKC roster and coaches are going to be perennial contenders for the next five plus years. Uh, then he says size is going to be a problem for OKC. And then G Money says Chet Holmgren can't play against true centers. Which I think there's some truth to that. Uh, let's get to Minnesota. 
Uh, Nestor, go ahead. Um, pretenders. Uh, although I feel like they do have uh, a great defensive player on their team, I just think they're they're pretenders. And we saw it the last uh, few two three weeks. Um, and I just don't think they have enough firepower in that offense. Um, so yeah, for me, pretenders. Malin? I really started wrestling back and forth things. Like, is the third seed in the West a contender? Um, the only reason why I'm going to say yes, that they are a contender, is that during the regular season, you have not seen Denver really play dominant ball. Um... They, I don't know if they're just bored of the regular season. They could end up turning it on at the postseason and make me look like an idiot for even suggesting that Minnesota has a chance in hell of doing anything. But anytime you have Cat and the top team, and you're within like one game of the top team in the West, I have a hard time just saying, eh, you don't have a shot, even though you're like two games out. You know? So I think it might be semantics. I think Denver's going to end up turning it on. Um, but man, Kawhi Leonard just slapped a basketball back to Saturn. <laughs> Jesus, why is everybody yelling? Everybody I uh, I think that the Timberwolves. This is a great time to buy their stock right now. Cat uh, has been out for a little while, um, but. For a long time, they were the best team in the West. And, you know, they've been without Cat for a little while now, and they, they, they're suffered because of that. But once he comes back into the lineup, because he's not going to be out um, too much longer, uh, I think they match up the best against Denver because they have the size. And, um, yeah, I think the Timberwolves are legit. Anthony Edwards is him. Uh, Gobert is still one of the best defenders in the NBA. Cats extremely versatile. Um, they have a great, great bench. Jaden McDaniels can lock down pretty much any win, wing player. Uh, I really like Minnesota, and I think they're without a doubt contenders. I think they are the best teams to give Denver specifically a run for their money. So, yeah. Um, yeah. G Money saying that if Cap was playing, then they would be a contender, but I don't think that they are this season. But. Hopefully he comes back hundred percent sooner rather than later. And oh, last, <laughs> last but not least, the Clippers. Go ahead, Nestor. Oh no, 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 no! They're uh, <laughs> definitely pretenders. Uh, should just put the Lakers on here. And then, although I would have said pretenders, still at least the less pretenders, in my opinion, than the Clippers. Honestly, I couldn't so, bring uh, myself to do that. Yeah, definitely pretenders. Uh, I don't even know if Paul George is still. He's still on that team, right? This man with his he's still there. PlayStation shoe. He's still there rapping. And I don't know. On a good day, if he's wearing his PlayStation shoes, he might, you know, pull the team together, and then they might win two games in the playoffs, and then that's it. It's over. So, yeah, pretenders. Did you know that Donovan Mitchell has Xbox shoes? Oh, this is a robbery now. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. no joke. Go ahead, man. I feel like I'm missing something with the Xbox shoes. What the hell is going on with Xbox shoes? They're actual Xbox. I think they look better than the PlayStation ones, but that's just me. NBA got uh, Switch shoes. Like PlayStation shoes, too? Switch shoes. What? This is where we are. We have video game shoes. Uncle Melon Color. I'm wearing these. People are playing real sports and video game shoes. I'll send you a photo of uh, the How Xbox. is this not a top story? You got... <laughs> what is... Video game shoes. <laughs> You're repping a bunch of people that sit on the couch and root for you. Oh, man. Okay. Yo, I'm going to pull myself up here after hearing that. Jesus Christ. I'm going to... um. I'm gonna send you this okay. shoe. Um, listen, I'm gonna say they're contenders, Jalen. I'm saying they're contenders. In fact, the Clippers wow. and my pick to 
to meet Denver in the Western Conference Finals. You're hearing it here. Wow. Maybe not for. But they're healthy. The team's healthy. They're playing. I mean, they had no business winning this game against Philly. Um, I think that uh, they they're playing really good basketball. Oh um, you know, anytime that you got Paul George and Kawhi healthy going into the playoffs, I just I just like the way they're playing. I like the way they're playing. I think they have more experience than the other teams ahead of them besides Denver, um, and I think they're going to be able to use that to their advantage. And I think Lou is one of the best coaches out of the West. Um, he knows how to get a team uh, to the finals. So you have a lot of star power there. You have a lot of people that know how to navigate playoff series. You have a time-tested coach, and they're healthy right now. So, contender. I really want to call them contenders, but they are just heading in the wrong direction at the wrong time right now. And it's like, damn it, what are they doing? It's nice that they did you know, kind of turn things around by beating Philly tonight. Um, but man, as of late, they have just been losing games that they should not be losing. Um, yeah, they are healthy and they still have Ty Lue, which is a very big selling point. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I can't actually see them competing for a title. So, so he, he, here's my thing, Jalen. Okay. That team is better constructed than Dallas. It's better constructed than Phoenix. They're yeah. not dealing with the injuries. They have a better head coach than OKC in Minnesota. They have, I think, the same talent. I think OKC might be a little bit more talented, but they're young. They've never been through the rigors of a playoff series. They don't know what to expect. Minnesota went to one playoff series, I think it was, with Pat Beverly. Uh, he took his shirt off, thought he won, you know, champion <laughs> of the world when he did it. Um I just think that that playoff pedigree is going to prove something during this. I, I just think that it will. The other teams in front of them in Denver are largely untested, but I think they're better than everybody behind them. Like, I don't see anybody behind them, New Orleans, Dallas, Sacramento, Phoenix, the Lakers, um, even Golden State. I don't see them beating them in a seven-game series. So to me, it's... Did the Clippers go toe-to-toe with Minnesota or OKC to be able to get to the Western Conference Finals with Denver? That's why I was able to put them there, because I think okay. they have a shot at doing it. So I feel that. I, was, I feel I was, that. I was just looking at all the rankings and everything, and just... So, I mean, I know I know it's a hot take. Probably going to be wrong. This is already <laughs> looking at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> okay. NBA J says the Clippers look like they can just turn it on at any minute they're going to make noise i would like them to because i think the nba is better when you have guys like pg-13 Kawhi, james harden russ you know being in a deep playoff run um i don't know it's just at times they can seem <laughs> uh bad. not last year same as before <laughs> <laughs> It, it also is really funny to me how the Clippers are doing this well, yet the Suns, a team that was supposed to be this world-beating team, is like just barely hanging on to a playoff spot. Yeah, Ridiculous. Bradley Beal has done a lot, right? <laughs> right. Thank hey, God they got I, Beal I there. Jalen, I do have one more contender out of the East. Oh, please do tell. I have one more contender before. No. <laughs> yeah. Miami Heat. Miami <laughs> Heat are a contender because this is what they do. They do. For the last five years, they play mediocre basketball. They either get into the play in or the eight seed or the seven seed. And then there's something about Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. That team just pisses people off. Uh, <laughs> like me. So, I mean, yeah, like they they could get to the that's the type of team that could end up in the Eastern Conference Finals 
And everybody looking around and be like, you know, if we paid attention to the last few years, we'd have seen this bullshit coming. Right. But we didn't think that the bullshit train was still rolling on the tracks, and here it is. Uh, so that's why I'm saying I, I hate it, but they, they do this bullshit every year. Every single year they do this. Yeah. Currently they're the seven seed. <laughs> We're right on track. Choo-choo. Right on track. <laughs> yeah. It, it does it does annoy me how like they've been doing this the past several years and like <laughs> no media outlet seems to pick up on it. Like they're, just... they're gonna stay in the play in just for the bullshit. <laughs> right, just for the drama. <laughs> I lo- anybody else love that everybody uses Jimmy Butler's profile picture of him with a straightened hair? Yeah. I think it's magical. <laughs> Every time I see that in my game, I'm like, like well, this is the NBA. I'm like, all right. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's move on from that. That was, that was a fun one. Let's get into the news for the week. All right, folks. We've got a little bit of news. We're going to start off with some NFL rule changes. Uh, So several days ago, the NFL announced that they are going to be banning hip drop tackles. Uh, So if a tackle is a a hip drop tackle where they wrap up by the hip and drag them down or... There's different variations of this tackle, but it's more grab the hip and fall. And down. and right, what right. It's like a, it's like you grab him by the hip and you twist and turn or fall down, or as you're falling down, grabbing the hip and pull him down. Pull him down, yeah. They don't want the you know like the suplex move that is uh the NFL. I don't know. It just seems like an optics thing to them, which you know doesn't look good. But um, they're claiming that it leads to different injuries. Uh, but the moral of the story is it'll result in a 15-yard penalty now. Um, but mainly, what do you think about this? Um, I mean, what? When are we gonna get NFL branded red and yellow flags? Like, when are we just going to go ahead and attach this? Um, this isn't a collision hit. Right. This isn't this isn't concussion related. Now you're protecting ankles and knees when you do this, but how much worse do you want to hamstring defenses? Like if if someone is one step or two steps ahead of a defender, and all you can do is get them by the hip, are you then just supposed to not pursue them and let them run to the right. end zone? Like they're already in front of you for a hip drop tackle to happen. They're already in front of you. So are you just supposed to concede defeat as a defender? Uh, and also keep in mind, if this rule was in place 30 years ago, the Rams don't beat the Titans in the Super Bowl. Hmm. Bison was tackled at the two-yard line with a hip drop tackle. It would have been first and goal inside the one, Steve McNair, Eddie George, to win the Super Bowl against the Rams if that was the case. But – you're getting rid of one of the most iconic moments in NFL history yeah. with Dyson getting wrapped up and putting that arm out there. That was a hip drop tackle. Um, so you're, I get it when you're trying to prevent head trama. Why they, you, you will talk about another rule change in a minute or, yeah. you know, the vicious hits to the head and stuff like that. But injuries are going to happen in sports and injuries are going to happen in the most contact sport that there is. I just, if I was a defender, I'd be throwing my arms up right now. I'd be like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. So it's kind of frustrating. I don't like the rule. I don't agree with it. But it is what it is. Nestor? I mean, I I like the intention of having less injuries and having less, you know, um, knee injuries and ankle injuries. I like the intention. Because I, you know, I don't like to see injuries. I, I like to see teams at their full potential, and see athletes have a, a you know, a smooth season for the most part. Um, but it just, I just have to imagine how difficult it's going to be to officiate this rule. And I just have to think back on my Dolphins and on those corners. They can't even do the tackle to begin with. 
Now it's just like, <laughs> I don't care. We, we we let Diggs run into the fucking end zone because we couldn't, we didn't know how to tackle. So it doesn't really affect us in any way. So <laughs> um, I, I just don't like, I, I feel like it's, I don't know. I, I like the intention, but it's, I feel like the execution, once you start officiating this in the games, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be, it's not going to look pretty. Another thing that I'll say, Joe, before you go, is that I feel, just because I'm older here, so again, this is a feeling thing, watching the game in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, I feel like the more we make rules and the interest, because what they're really doing, they don't actually care about player safety. What they really want is to make sure that someone like Christian McCaffrey, Stefan Diggs, people like that, don't get hurt and are unavailable because they want the best players on the field. That's what they really want. They don't give a shit if the third wide receiver on any squad mm-hmm. tears their ACL up. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm also not a proponent of this rule. And Geno Smith got tackled by hip tackle last year, and he hurt his ankle, and he missed a, a game or so. So, I mean, it did affect my team too. But I feel like the more rules we make to try to eliminate injuries, to make sure that we have the biggest stars on the field, it seems like more stars are getting hurt in different ways that keep them out longer. Is my feeling like I just remember back in the day, man, like when I'm watching the playoffs in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s, the best players were all available. They're all playing in the playoffs. You weren't having all of these season ending injuries. You would have the Dan Marinos every now and then or, you know, Phil Sims went down or Joe Montana went down in the NFC championship game. Uh, I think it was against the Giants. Uh, but your running backs were not getting hurt. Your wide receivers were healthy like you weren't. I just don't think the injuries to the higher profile athletes were happening back then. And so I'm like, why, why every time we do this, another way for them to get hurt happens. Yeah. So how far is this going to go? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you went there where it's like the NFL doesn't actually care about, uh, you know, the third string player coming out and getting hurt. Like they just want to protect the stars. And it's just one more thing for them to, uh, bolster NFL offenses like the game has been moving to a more offensive focused game for the past however long and they're going to do whatever they need to to continue to protect their offensive stars and um, slowly it's like little thing by little thing they penalize the defense but there's very few things that seem to happen on offense to slow them down in, in any shape way or form but uh you know, people want to see a high-flying, high-scoring game. So I get it. They're trying to sell to the audience and what they want. Um, but it's just sad when it comes at the expense of the other half of the field. Like, that's still 50% of your game is defensive players that are out there. And, um, you know, the fact that they have to, like, every single year, it seems like there's some new rule where they have to tiptoe around it and figure out how to uh, slow these dudes down. Um, it's it's really unfortunate. And the NFL always thinks they're slick with trying to protect the players. And it's like, that's a very secondary thing on your to-do list. You just want your $100 million skill position people to be <laughs> right. on the field. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. If I was an owner and I was paying that much money, I'd be like, I don't know, put him in fucking bubble wrap. Make the defense play in bubble wrap. So when they hit him, they <laughs> bounce a little bit. Like, fuck this. <laughs> That's a lot of money. It, it, it is. It is rightfully I so. When I spend twelve dollars at a fast food place right now, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next rule change is a kickoff rule change. Uh, So this came from the XFL originally, and I'm trying to read this here to sum this up. Uh, So during the 2024 season, kickers will continue to kick from the 35-yard line, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line. At least nine members of the the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 35 and 30-yard line. Up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20-yard line. No 
No one other than the kicker and returners can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone. Which is like the, the bigger change there, but um yeah. There's there's a bit more to it, but what do you guys think about this? Um, I think it's wildly getting not the press that it should be getting. Mm-hmm. Um, this is gonna change the game. Uh, two things. One, um, can we do anything else in the NFL to isolate kickers and make them feel like they're not a part of the team? They're gonna make this man yards back from everybody else and kick the ball all by himself. Like he don't even get nobody on line with him anymore. Like he'd be standing out there like son of a bitch. They're uh, actually little. they're kicking like, from the parking lot now. <laughs> like I'm already, I'm already small. And here you are, just make me out here in the middle of the field on the other end. I don't get, you even get to be with my teammates anymore. <laughs> um, but when the XFL did this, they had an 85% return rate. Wow. 85%. Versus, I think that it was 20% return rate in the NFL last year with the kickoff rules that they had. Wow. Because of how you could, you can catch the ball. I think it's inside the 10 or something like that. Maybe it's the 20 and still do a touchback and get it at 25. Mm. You're when you only have 5 yards to start running once the ball hits the ground or is caught as the kickoff team, you don't got no head of speed. Right. You, you, you got you got no steam going. That defense like you're you're going to see a lot more returns. Right. We're going to see a lot more offenses starting on the other side of the 30 um than we've ever seen. Some of these, a lot of these teams are going to be making choices on that third and fourth receiver. Who is the fastest motherfucker we can get to just try to burn past these people with the ball? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the yeah. kick returner is Devin Hester is pissed <laughs> that he's not playing in this right. NFL, right? Deion Sanders is like, what the hell? Uh, you know, I think it's D'Angelo Hall from 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 Kansas City Chiefs. These are just a few of those kick returns back in the day. They on Washington with the Jets and the Seahawks. Like they're like, really? Like I don't I don't have to have these people have a right. have a sixty five yard head start at my ass. Like <laughs> exactly, yeah. it, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, they looked at the XFL, which is their you know their beta league they test everything out there they uh they saw that return rate and said "Ooh, more more offense more scoring potentially and we can cut down on collisions let's do it but the crazy but the crazy thing is the usfl and xfl bind and they're yeah. not even using this model interesting this they're doing the conventional model <laughs> That's odd. <laughs> I was just li- I was just watching a uh, I was just watching an interview today with uh, Speak, and they had a uh, Bob Stoops, the old uh, Oklahoma head coach, and uh, he's the team. He's the coach of the team that won the XFL championship last year. Gotcha. Um, and he was talking about how much he loved it and how he thought it was great, and he lamented on the fact that they weren't using it this year in the UFL. I was like, well, isn't that fucking wild? <laughs> the UFL ain't using it, but the NFL's taking things from a defunct league. Funny. Yeah, it, it's odd that uh, the USL is not doing that anymore. But um, I'm, I mean, I'm excited to see once the t- change comes into play. Um, but yeah, the NFL wants more offense, and this just kind of feeds right into that. So, is what it is. What do you think, Nestor? Never mind. He turns the camera off. There he is. <laughs> My Bluetooth is has AI or something because it wants to connect when it wants to connect. It has AI. <laughs> <laughs> it's very advanced. <laughs> uh, but... His camera's going to be like iRobot about to throw his ass out of a, out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> Smith is going to be investigating his murder. Uh, MVAJ says new kickoff rule is brilliant. Um, in other news, I'm tr- the the 
Thunder are trying to beat the Rockets here, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. So I'm, I'm watching the end of this game. Um, let's get into. <laughs> hey, we're going to be talking about the Rockets later in the Rider Die in Five. Uh, let's oh, no. get into the last uh, bit of news here. So the Celtics did blow a 30 point lead to Atlanta. We kind of touched on this earlier. Uh, this was just so depressing. I mean, they were up by, they had 74 points in the first half, 74 points. And they were right around the 30 point mark as far as how big their lead was. And third quarter came around. They said, well, game's over. Atlanta said the hell it is and just ran them down. And, uh, I don't know. The Celtics, it seems like they just shit themselves as soon as they find out that the other team is not going to just roll over. Malin, what were your thoughts on this? Jesus Christ. Well, Peter. we had a. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, right with a minute 18 left in the third quarter, we still had a 91.5%. Now, keep in mind, all the way through the entire second quarter, it was 99.9%. The entire second quarter was 99.9% we were going to win this game. And so we go from 91.5% with a minute 18 left in the third to losing the game to the goddamn Atlanta Hawks. I don't know about you, but I forgot that Atlanta still had a basketball team. I thought that that I thought that team folded when Dominique Wilkins and Spud Webb left in the late eighties. Man, uh, like what are we doing? Like how how do you play worse than Trey Young's hair? Like how? What is? I don't have words. I deserved to hear Gary laughing at me on the other end of the face <laughs> as I was watching the end of this game. I was so befuddled and angry, not understanding how it could happen. Um, I, I just like at some point, man, it's like it's simple gravity. Just let the foot stay on the gas. Like you don't, you don't gotta pull it up. You're doing more work by pulling the foot off the gas <laughs> than you are keeping it on the gas. Like, I need to shut up before I get really angry. So, yes, it was stupid. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was reading um, comments. Yeah, I, I stopped watching after after halftime. I was like, all right, game over. I don't need to watch the rest of this. It's Atlanta. That's it. And then that was not it. And I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to, uh, <laughs> you know, G Money and I, uh, I, well, I was upset. I was, I, my comment was, uh, what the fuck did our Celtics do in the second half besides holding each other's bleep? Uh, Jesus, man. Uh, that was, <laughs> that was. Yeah, yeah, G Money just says, I remember Malin saying that Boston had this game in the bag after they were up by 21. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. They get outscored, man, in the second half. They just get oh. ridiculously outscored and just make boneheaded mistakes. Yes. <laughs> oh, the turnovers yeah. were Mid unreal. Midway through the second quarter, I remember telling G Money. This game's over. I don't have yeah. to watch this anymore. Let, let's turn on some tourney ball. Let, let's see what's going on here. I mean, I was more intrigued by a women's college basketball game than I was that game. Yeah. As much as they were blowing them out. That's why you play the game. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's going to do it for the first half of this week's show. We are going to go to a 10-minute break. When we can come back, we will have the G-Money with us on the other side. We're going to have Malin's Misery in 5, and then we are doing our Rider Die in 5. So that that's going to be a doozy, folks. Stay tuned. 
Hey. Yeah. Like I ain't just had on the coat when I landed out branded Perch at the edge of the branches They don't wanna talk mansions Mine look like a campus And I'm all about my brothers like the niggas I'm sampling I'll leave you red shirted like the twins from Kansas Really living my dreams I used to have in my hands crib my- That 2022, 2023 Laker roster really was overperforming in the playoffs. The Lakers opted to keep Austin Reeves but he has a fairly low ceiling. He's a solid guard but not great. Hachimura is a solid two-way player, but again, not great. D'Lo comes and goes with the weather, the Gabe Vincent signing was an absolute disaster, and the rest of the guys like Hayes, Prince, Reddish, kinda jags. Which leaves us with the two stars, LeBron and Anthony Davis. LeBron is approaching 40, and it's abundantly clear that he cannot and should not be expected to carry an NBA team anymore. And AD has quietly been having a great season, but he isn't carrying the team. The Lakers messed up by trading for just solid players instead of stars. And then they did go out and sign a star, and it was Russell Westbrook. Great thing he's just coming off an ACL injury. I think it's going to be a great season for him and Aaron Rodgers. They're going to be very fit. His rookie year, he missed about six or seven games. And then from about 2018 to 2021, he played almost all starts. 2022, he missed about a month. And then last year, he only played about a month. If you can keep him healthy, there's not a lot of wear and tear on the body. I ever thought about building this Jets team was a genius. I think it's going to be about a 36 to 14 game. Tampa didn't play good, good last week. I, I'm going to say it's probably going to be like a 32, 17, 18 game. It's going to be close. Depends. It's not going to rain anymore. So I'm going to go with we're going to win by 10. I'll be honest. I think a lot of Eagles fans are nervous right now. I think it's going to be a close game. This is the Julio Jones night. This is the night where we find out what Julio Jones has left in the tank. You're basically saying Devontae Smith ain't shit. You know who's going to score tonight? Turn around. That's who's going to score. I think it's going to be 21-24 bucks. Jalen doesn't have A.J. Brown. He's going to throw the ball to to Devontae, but... Bucks going to win it. 27-23. Baker's going to drive it the last minute, score a touchdown, take the lead, win the game. All right, so he still thinks Baker plays at Oklahoma. Go ahead. 24-21, Birds. And I only think we win by three because AJ's out, Devontae's hurt, Jalen's hurt. We run the football, we win by three. We go destroy the Lions when AJ comes back. 28-17, Eagles. All Did day. you know AFR is also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? Click the first link in the description below to listen to the most recent episode of the show. He That's won the chip. Right. I want to see what his trophy is. He whooped my like. ass. Yes. Oh, look yeah. at the unwrapped. Da, da, da. <laughs> look at this bad boy. That's tight. Like we got some. Uh, Very nice. A couple <laughs> of bad drafts, but you know, the waiver wire. Yeah, man. You were he clutch. Was on it. Yeah. Like you think Taylor for being friends with Autumn. Let's go for the repeat. We do a, we do a sports podcast. Okay. Uh, and I can't help but notice <laughs> that somebody <laughs> is wearing an inside out that jersey. You know what? It's just a coincidence. Explain what is happening right now. The forecast was for rain. I didn't want the, wa- the rain to fall on the outside. That's all it is? Because I love Jack. He's the best quarterback in the league. Big Mike's the best coach what? ever. Art Dallas is deep. Awesome. Yesterday was just unlucky. We won the coin toss. It was the Cowboys win. It was all about the coin toss. Let's talk defense. You're wearing the Cardinals hat. You don't get a say. Dan Quinn. I don't want him as my coach. Oh, he's going to be, though. I don't want him to be. I heard a stat today. Green Bay has won more playoff games 
at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Do you know if that's true? It probably, it probably is. is. I heard it said. Oh, so you still love that? Just thinking about it. has got to go. Big Mike's got to go. Dan Quinn's got to go. <laughs> Jerry's got to rip this shit up. Who do you want to replace Dak then? Don't say Russell Wilson. I was going to just ask you, would you trade Russell Wilson straight <laughs> off the bat? No! I wouldn't either now. I don't you know. went Browns to Bills? No, no, I was a Buffalo fan and a Cleveland fan. So, well, they're on the AFC. Oh, okay. Milwaukee beat the Thunder 118 to 93 yesterday. This was a bad look for the Thunder. Jesus. Let's look at some stats. Milwaukee really beat them up in the paint. The Bucks out rebounded the Thunder by 20 rebounds. Giannis, Middleton, Lopez, they just said, We're bigger than y'all. We're just going to beat you up in the paint. Doesn't help that the Thunder just basically shot themselves out of this game. 10 for 43 on three point shooting. That's 23.3%. That's terrible. At a certain point, when do you just say, Stop shooting the ball? Milwaukee with 58 points in the paint. Thunder only 32. The Bucks simply just bigger. And the Thunder had an atrocious third quarter. There was a while there where they just could not score the ball at all in the second half, and the Bucks just took off. Off. Giannis had 30 points, 19 rebounds. Middleton just snuck into a triple double, 11, 10, and 10. Portis came off the bench, gave him 15 points. SGA had a bad game. Whatever, you know, Thunder, this is a game for them to forget. I don't think it was anything serious. Bucks, good win for them. They were just bigger. I have South Carolina coming out of Region 1. Region 2, I do have LSU. LSU is hitting on all strides of late. They didn't have a resume, get a one or a two seed because of their early struggles. Angel Reese was suspended for a while, but they've been playing great ball. Selfishly, I really want to see another South Carolina LSU matchup because of that brawl they had. I have USC in Region 3. USC has a freshman phenom that is averaging like over 32 points a game. Uh, they're really exciting. They won the Pac-12. Again, I got South Carolina, LSU, USC, and Texas. Darvin Ham, sometimes it's like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, Hachimura, you've got the hot hand. You're playing really, really well. Oh, come, come sit down. What? What are you doing? Sometimes he seems so strict to his rotation. He doesn't care who's hot and who's not. It's like he doesn't have a feel for the game while yeah. the game's happening. Like whatever he thought he was going to do before the game started, he's going to stick Yeah, it. especially when they're playing the Golden State Warriors and have no business losing the game. Darvin Ham should be a bench coach. That's where he's good at. He's not a head coach, but that's who you're stuck with. Celtics just lost to the Hawks, 120-118. to 118. Boston was up by over 30 points at one point in this game. First half, the game was over. Boston put up 74 points in the first half. 74 points in the first half, and they lost the game. They come on out in the second half, and they just did not want to play basketball at all in the third quarter. Then the fourth quarter comes around, and all of a sudden, they want to try it. It's like, hold on a minute. I think that if they score more of these baskets than we do, then we're going to lose. Like, yes, this is what frustrates me with my own team. We get so complacent. It's ridiculous. 
ridiculous. Or like a dude in a relationship that goes hard for the first however many months and then after that they just completely give up. They're treating to nice dates, they're doing stuff around the house, they're making little surprises, giving gifts. The girl gets her hopes up and then it just kind of fizzles back down and that's what the Celtics just keep doing. Still the best team in the league, but this is what concerns me. They get complacent fast. Remember to follow the show on TikTok and Instagram at Effa Sports. Now back to your favorite show on the <coughs> internet with your hosts, Jalen, Malon, Nestor, and G Money. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back to your favorite show on the internet. Coming at you with the second half after further review, episode 181. G Money, thank you for joining us. What's going on? Hey, you know, just another good night here in the PNW watching uh, Nuggets. Phoenix, damn. Oh. Like you know, open that Mariners. Opening day tomorrow. You, you know, opening day. You, you, you know, um, we're going to the playoffs. And if like we it. stay healthy, I think we make the World Series. Damn right. I mean, we've got. I mean, even with um, Wu out as our fifth starter for probably the first month, we've got the best starting rotation in Major League Baseball. Damn right we do. Okay. So, and and That's when was the last time we had we had three years that we had winning seasons in a row? Uh, I was twenty. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. That's the <laughs> answer. I mean, I gas think... gas was eighty cents a gallon. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think Clinton Clinton was the president. Nine <laughs> Eleven hadn't happened yet. The, yeah. uh, 9 was just a time. Yeah. World Trade Center, standing tall, baby. Yeah. We did that. I also would all like right. to, even though I don't have anything to do with this, uh, the Kraken took an L on Sunday, and I may or may no. not have a friend that attended that game for the first time ever, and uh, I feel like they had something to do with that loss. Um, <laughs> well, the fact that I, think I mean, we've lost like eight in a row or something stupid. <laughs> we're we're pl playing uninspired. And uh, I always thought it was a mistake to like give Hextall an extension after his second year. I mean, even the uh, Las Vegas Knights didn't do that to their coach. And he took him to the freaking Stanley Cup. And they fired him the following season. <laughs> like, yeah, you took us. We lost. We're not winning right now. Thanks. Goodbye. Yeah. The, the the Kraken went from uh, the Kraken went from playoff contenders to just bottom of the barrel in like eight or nine days. Yikes! Like, That's unfortunate. Let's uh, let's take a cheer for the second half. Yeah, let's let's take a cheer. Cheers and happy International Whiskey Day. <clears throat> yes. What? Oh damn. You didn't know that? I mean, it's an international day of something every day now. Sometimes they double up on causes, but yes, it's National Whiskey Day. I'm not trying to say anything bad. Just saying we've had two International Women's Day. Uh, <laughs> those Valentine's. Those are what, recognized what, holidays <laughs> here in Colombia. When's the and second so Women's so Day? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> women's Day do you need? <laughs> I would be careful, Nessie. Your 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 wife already put you out on the patio earlier. I wouldn't. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't go any further. Carefully. And and we've already decided that she's crazy. So for her, she's never gonna meet G Money. Shit. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we we've said that off air. <laughs> you just you just put all our lives at risk, G Money. You just all of them. Get us out now. I'm at risk for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get into Malin's misery in five. Malin, what do you have for us this week? All time. You got all time. All right, so I got several things. A laundry I'm list. Say one. Let you guys react. Then we're gonna go to the next one. I gotta be honest with you. The first one is not sports related. 
The first one Good. is just society and fucking general right now, okay? So I have a brand new bunk bed that's only been in my house for a year. I'm just trying to get rid of it. I put it up on Facebook Marketplace six hours ago for free. Okay? I already right now have 163 <laughs> new messages. My phone is dying. It can't properly charge my phone is plugged in but the power is going down because of the amount of notifications i'm getting okay but i swear to god 85 percent of these people they want a free bunk bed either want me to take it apart or they want me to take it to them mm -hmm. or they want me to give them something else you have to pay them to give them <laughs> <laughs> It's a free bunk bed. Just Just, if you want it, I'm fucking take it. I'm not doing shit. I'll take it apart and beat you to death with it. <laughs> with the way that some of these people are being. Have you I offered to install it? I just got three more. Is it still available? Yes, it's still available. Come get the fucker. Quit talking about it. Be about it, people. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's the first thing. Uh, I'm going to. on Facebook Marketplace. I never knew these people existed. <laughs> Oh, they do. They in droves. Existed <laughs> until this is the first time I've ever posted on Facebook Marketplace. This is the worst. <laughs> These people are worse than politicians. I swear to God. Like, I'm going to ask you if it's still available. Then I'm going to ask two days later if you can deliver it. And then three days later, I'm going to ask if you can install it in my own place. Deliver it with a GoPro. <laughs> I, I literally just got two more. I just got two more. Somebody at 10.52 at night right now just posted, hey, I'm going to put you on blast, Haley, Elena. Uh, yeah, uh, it is available, but no, I'm not taking it apart right now. I would be a Haley. And I would prefer if you not come to my place of residence at 11 o'clock at night. These wild-ass people. They're not even people. They're creatures. <laughs> fucking, it's like 167 Smeagles running around chasing a fucking ring. These goddamn leeches. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So that's the first thing. You really got my gears grinding here. Second Can you thing, install it? Uh, hey, uh, Cam Newton, can you do me a favor and stop acting like a 25-year-old guy <laughs> that goes single to a high school prom and wondering why nobody wants to dance with you. What are you doing with all of these <laughs> interviews constantly talking about how you're better than everybody right now? Like, you, you had a great career. That's wonderful. I get it. It's great. Gardner Minshew is a better quarterback than you right now. Yep. Gardner Minshew. Right now. Got a quarterback. All of the, the top five quarterbacks coming out into the draft <clears throat> are a better quarterback than you right now. Um, you're so bent on wanting to solidify your legacy, yet the only iconic thing you ever did was not die for a ball in the Super Bowl. Um, quit talking about how you were a five-star in high school, a five-star at Florida, a five-star at Juco, a five-star at Auburn. It's all about <laughs> what you did in the pros. You won one MVP, and you didn't die for a football in the Super Bowl, and you lost to a one-armed Peyton Manning and Von Miller that stole your soul. So keep creating great looking hats to fit your braids, fighting with high school is at camps, but do me a favor and shut the fuck up. That's my next one. Anybody got <laughs> anything to say about that? I right. like can't, that guy can't agree TikTok more. That he, he went to his high school expecting, after he graduated, expecting like people to know him. Like, oh yeah, remember me? <laughs> like, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> no, we do not remember you, actually. <laughs> it's like Cam, you you, you forget your uh, days in New England. You weren't the best quarterback there. If you weren't the best quarterback there, you're not the best quarterback anywhere. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just that's you. You want to prove you're the best quarterback? Go to the X X U S F L. Go play there. Ball out. And maybe they'll get, you, you get to go to training camp in the NFL. But, you know, your days are gone. And it's sad because you were a damn good quarterback at one time. 
And I, I, I tend to think that because of the type of quarterback you were, the refs let you take way too many hits than you should have taken. Um, I will say that. I will say that it's kind of like, you know, Shaq could have been fouled on every play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. There could have been roughing the passer on Cam a lot more. But I think refs are like, nah, he could take it. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so that's true. But that's the nicest thing I'm going to say about him. Otherwise, shut up. Uh, all right, next one on the bubble here. I got I got two more people. Uh, we added one during the show. It really pisses me off that we're doing this. Uh, <laughs> second, Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to be the vice president of anything. Shut up. Like, what are we... What are we doing with Aaron Rodgers? Why? He is worse. Why do we not crucify this man worse than Brett Favre? Brett Favre retired 18 times. Uh, and everyone was like, oh, my God, Brett Favre, like, shut up, just be gone. Like, Aaron Rodgers, what, what, like, how many times you got to go in a dark cave, come out, say you want to play, go to the Jets, get hurt. Now, all of a sudden, you, you're like, well, now I'm going to be a vice president candidate to what? Nobody, you don't even believe that COVID was real. I don't, I don't think it had, like, you had some was sort it? of magical remedy for COVID and you talked all this. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Like, there's no way that, like, we're never going to get the budget balanced with Aaron <laughs> Rodgers out there clo- shutting down, shutting all the blinds and turning off all the lights and telling people to leave them alone for eight hours so we can figure out what to do with Ukraine or the fucking Middle East. Like, shut up. It's not <laughs> happening. I don't know why that's even a story. A third one. Anybody? I mean, I have nothing to add. <laughs> see, that's what that's what happens when you graduate from Berkeley. And yes, I said Berkeley. <laughs> oh, yeah, because that's where he graduated from. Yeah, he he likes to call it Cal, but it's you, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Freaking dumbass! You burnt your mind out on fucking magic mushrooms, and now you want to be vice president. Look, your best shot of being VP was Robert F. Kennedy, who went and picked some Google fucking vice president. So, there you go. And not happening. And you chug a beer like a bitch. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. we've all seen it. You can't drink a beer. Like, And you're supposed to be representing Green Bay and now New York? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, last yeah. one. Um, I haven't even seen the pictures yet. What the fuck are we doing with PlayStation and Xbox shoes? What? <laughs> what? Take a look at that the picture in the Discord. They're trying to get Nintendo Is shoes. In Oklahoma City. For Why? Why are we now? Listen, I play video games, but by and large, seventy percent of the people that play video games, and I'm talking to myself, we're some of the laziest people on this planet. We do flight simulators instead of actually going out there and flying fucking planes. We play Madden instead of going out and play football. We play NBA 2K instead of actually going out and play basketball. Like, we, you know, you got a bunch of people fucking around on Fortnite with all these crazy ass <laughs> things and thinking, like, this is my life. And now, professional athletes are out here in these shoes. What do we <laughs> Why? Why? It's hilarious that right. Seattle Sounders are sponsored for a long time. They were sponsored by uh, Xbox. Xbox. Mm-hmm. I actually have a Sounders jersey. That was a great jersey. Right. It, it was a great jersey. Love that kit. <laughs> you notice how I called it a kit? Uh huh. I learned things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I just, I mean, and I love video games and I love Xbox, but I don't think that an Xbox logo has any business being on an NBA court, unless they're like some sort of advertisement on the jersey and they're paying right. you millions upon millions of dollars. It's, what are we... And as Jamie Watering, the Nintendo Switch, dude, that just, the, that just makes it all... <laughs> you Tell can't have that. If we can get some Nintendo Switch shoes to SGA, <laughs> I think I could Bro. die happy. <laughs> Please, no. Well, the only other the only other misery in five I had was uh, the Celtics losing by thirty, but we already covered that one. So right. I'm go ahead and 
and uh, try to be less angry until we start talking about Ride or Die in Five, and I become more. Angry. Can I can I bring up something really really quick? Yes, by all means. Don't really make quick. me be the only bitter ass. What do you guys here. think about Otani and the and the gambling? Oh, that's right. I didn't bring it up. Okay, so first of all. Uh, you just made the show 20 minutes long, <laughs> Chester, so congratulations. Um, I hope that that was your objective. We're all at home. Um, you guys think he did it? I, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> just, I don't know how you get $4 million. It's $4 million, right? Four point seven five. Four and a half. Four and a half, half million mil. dollars in debt, and you are an employee of a Major League Baseball team, and nobody finds it out. Okay. That's the first thing that's strange to me. If I get a hundred dollars in debt, getting, I'm screwed. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, if I'm like if my bank account is negative five dollars, I'm probably gonna be homeless. This, this <laughs> motherfucker is like four and a half million dollars and he still has a job and a place to live. I'm like, what what is that life? Uh so then uh Otani wires him the money. He does an interview saying that Otani gave him the money. Then Ocon- Otani's camp's like, ah, you know, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. So we're going to say you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, then he comes out and says, well, Otani didn't know I took it. And I was like, that's a good fall. That's a good fall guy. That's a good friend. That is a good friend. Um, but, you know, Otani came out with his new interpreter that better not fucking gamble anything in his life. That man better not be rolling dimes like Michael Jordan was doing back in the locker room with that weird-ass white guy back in the last dance. Better not even be doing that shit. But he comes out and says, I never did anything wrong. I never did anything. So that should pretty much settle it because we're supposed to believe professional athletes that everything was on the up and up as long as they tell us they didn't do anything because it's not like anybody in baseball has ever lied. Anybody else remember Palmero? I never, never took steroids. <laughs> never. 98 days later. Yeah, you took steroids. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know what happened. I just think it's a bad look. I think I don't think he actually bet on games, but I don't... I just wish this wasn't something we were talking about with the baseball season coming up. Like, we don't need this right yeah. now. Crazy. Some people want him out of the league because of that. that's ridiculous. Well, those yeah. are those yeah. people live in Alabama and they're racist. Um, <laughs> they don't like that a Japanese player is the best player. Well, it's uh, not necessarily true. Some mid- of them, are, some of them are in San Francisco. The Giants fans thinking, "Oh yeah, let's get him out because <laughs> there, there, there is there is a man in Mississippi somewhere right now smacking his wife and hitting his kid, thinking Otani's a piece of shit." He shouldn't play baseball anymore. He's also never seen a Japanese human being ever in his life. <laughs> Only on TV. <laughs> Only so. on TV. And John Wayne killed all of them. <laughs> and that was two years before he, before John Wayne was Genghis Khan. Yeah. <laughs> but now, I, so here's a question, right? So why wasn't the interpreter, why is that background check done on him? I mean, even if Otani didn't do it, how about the Angels? The Dodgers. I mean, I mean, either one, you, you should do a background check on, on, on these guys because he was hanging around the clubhouse and everything. And it's like, and, and how do you, so I gamble in Vegas. I know that if I t- take out a marker, um, I have 30 days to pay that back. They're coming after me. Um, so if uh, you're a bookie and you've been betting for two and a half years and you run four and a half million dollars in debt, how at some point aren't, aren't – how is the bookie even saying, okay, well, you know, you're, you're good for it. You're good for yeah. it. It's like, no, I can't say that I've ever heard of a bookie extending that much credit for that length of time, unless he's getting inside information, unless he's getting something that's actually helping him, and he'll extend that line of credit. Yeah. And and for the interpreter to say that he never bet on baseball. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm telling you right now, Jalen, 
if I'm doing anything and I'm down a hundred dollars and I have inside info on Starbucks, I'm telling somebody about it. <laughs> like, so I, you know, like I'm betting on something that I know this man is in MLB clubhouses. He knows MLB players. Like at some point you'll get the four and a half million down and not start betting your bread and butter. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. That would be like you losing $500 on horse races and then be like, you know what? I'm down $500, but I'll be goddamned if I'm not going to, I'm never going to make a bet on the NBA or the NFL. <laughs> I'm never going to do it. <laughs> I love those two sports, but I'm never going to, I'm never going to bet on what I know the best. Right. To try to make up any of this money. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's wild. I mean, one or two things happen with this guy. Either he, Either he was getting inside information, like Gary suggests, because that that's a very real thing, or that bookie knew who his best friend was. It was like at some point, mm. Otani got to bail your ass out, and there's no way in hell because this started in 2017. He didn't lose four and a half million dollars worth of bets. This is an illegal bookie. This man is like, oh, you can't pay him a hundred thousand. Well, now you can't pay him by Friday, five hundred thousand. Like he added, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like he got in it deep. Otani was just trying to help out a friend, I believe. But it's gonna be, I don't know. There's so many people that listen to Otani's press conference. It was like, well, he didn't do anything wrong. He said it. Otani <laughs> yeah. said he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so must be true. And MLB is like, we're just we're. <laughs> right. we, don't want to, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to hear about it. Yeah. They're like, can we stay in South Korea for like the rest of the season? Because yeah, we, we can't get back. We can't start the investigation. Uh, time difference. I'm sorry, I don't quite understand you. I need an interpreter. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I get it. You're speaking English. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't don't quite understand what you're saying. <laughs> Ma- ma- but, Major League Baseball is the best sport at throwing their own players under the bus to save face. But with Otani and w- with the shape that Major League Baseball is right now, they're like, Mm-mm. right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to part in it. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because that broke, and then earlier this week, John T- um Parker, a porter, should I say, uh, for NBA betting. For, for doing prop bets on his own stats. I mean, it's like... Now, regular they, betting they, on his own stats. I, I, I mean, you know, the over-under and shit like yeah. that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, dude, if you're going to do that, you need yeah. like a thousand sure. degrees of separation. <laughs> you know, you need that bank account coming from Kiev. And you need... Someone named Ahmed betting, so it can't be tied to you. Don't be, be having your dad Ahmed make too. bets for you. You know, <laughs> that's just yeah. not. It's not just a good look. I mean, when when you average like five points a game, <laughs> and the over under is like three points, and there's heavy betting in Vegas, you don't mm-hmm. think that shows up? Like, if you have a five points a game and there's somebody that's that degenerate that's like, you know what? This motherfucker is going to come under. Two million. Like, that. Like, it's going to throw some flags. It's going to throw some flags. No one is that wild. No one. Like, oh, man. On. I love it. I love how these people think they're not going to get caught. And I love right. how people think that in, okay, so here's the last thing I'm going to say about it. And this is why Nesta turns this into a 20-minute longer show. <laughs> is that I hate when people are talking about how these sports are the hypocrisy of it because we want to nail professional athletes when they bet. Yet, all these sports leagues are in bed with, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings and, like, all this mm-hmm. other stuff. I mean, we got teams in Vegas now. You want to know why it's not hypocritical? It's because these leagues... The only way they make money is if they have the appearance of up and up and honesty. The moment that people think or you create the air of a sport is rigged, 
your league will fold. It's not professional wrestling. You cannot allow the people that are playing the games to have any type of association yeah. with betting. It, it can't happen. And even G Money brought this up when we were talking. People that work in casinos in Vegas can't gamble in the casinos that they work for. And I'm pretty sure it's probably all property. So if you work for an MGM property, you probably can't gamble on any MGM property. So it, you just, you have to have that separation. I yeah. don't understand why people think that's hypocrisy. You're making millions of dollars playing a game and people are betting on it. I'm so sorry that you don't get to get in on that. Right. And the sad thing is, is you're making the NBA league minimum, which is $800,000. If you have an issue where you can't live on $800,000, even in Canada, um, yeah, betting 30, 40 grand isn't going to help you any. And you lose, I mean, let's say, and I, obviously all the, the investigation hasn't come out yet, I mean, completely. But let's say he won 50K on these prop bets. All of a sudden, now he's out of the league and he's banned for life. And that's an $800,000 job that you just lost to win 50K. It, it, it makes no sense. Well, <clears throat> now that now that Nestor added on an extra fifteen minutes to the show, <laughs> we will uh, hop into the last segment of the week, which is the ride or die in five. Ooh, Folks, this is a very hit or miss segment as of late. This is where we give you the five best bets in sports this weekend, or basically this upcoming week. And last week we didn't do too hot. So uh <laughs> G Money and I went 0 and 5. Mm. Malin went 1 and 4. And Nestor went 2 and 3. So doesn't that make you 0 and 5 two out of three weeks? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. We've all gone zero and five at some point in the last three weeks. Right, I mean, March. Oh, yeah. March has yeah. been very unkind very to us. Okay. So, uh, hey, Tony's ex interpreter, if you're listening, put your bets down. Whatever we say. <laughs> Short. Short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so right now I am plus fifty one. Malin is plus fifty. I'm close. G- He's he's right there. Uh, G Money is plus twenty seven, and Nestor is plus twenty five. So we're all right back within striking distance of uh, each other. <laughs> it's funny how that changes so so quickly. Uh, <clears throat> all right, let's start off tomorrow night, eight o'clock, Milwaukee at New Orleans. I just wanted to mention I did not put any. Los and no California teams are in this this lineup. I just just know I don't give a fuck if you're in California. We're not we're not picking you this week. So yeah. Does it have to do with I think G Money and I threatened your life? I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rightfully <Could> so. <laughs> the next morning you woke was... up and you said, "Well, I guess I'm not picking any LA." Teams this week. I mean, it's just bad. I mean. You, you you look at the LA teams and, and and when you watch them they 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 win when they shouldn't they lose when they shouldn't and it's like the hell they're schizophrenic <laughs> yeah it's like that because they live in LA yeah yeah that's true that's only right <laughs> all right so Bucks right. at Pels uh, G Money who do you like here so so um, Giannis may well be out. He's got that hamstring injury. So I'm going to guess that he's going to be out. Um, Zion's been playing fairly well of recent. Um, You know, he's lost some weight. He actually moved up and down the court. Um, I like uh, like New Orleans. I do. Yeah, I'm going to go next here. Uh, New Orleans is playing really good ball as of late. They're 7-3 the last 10 games. They're only... um, (laughs) half a game back of uh, or one game back of the Clippers. So 
Um, give me New Orleans to win, to win no, this one, especially no, if Giannis is going to be out. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nestor. Take the, the, the Bucks. No. I'm going to take New Orleans, so... Um, yeah. <laughs> the first L never of our last time. This never goes good. Yeah, um, no one has been playing better. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Let's see. I'm about to... Mayday, mayday. <laughs> We're approaching a bridge. This is terrible. <laughs> the, this never ends well when we all pick the same people. No, it doesn't. Like, God. So, but yeah, I mean, come on. Without Giannis, you, you saw what they just did last night. Um, and they had Giannis, didn't they, last night? They had Giannis and. Um, no, I, I, no, I don't it, think Giannis played last night. Or at least he didn't. He wasn't playing when I was watching. Maybe he got hurt and like went out in that game. Uh, but I know the Lakers didn't have LeBron James. No, uh, right. I mean, the Lakers not. twice, twice the Lakers came back from 19 down, twice, and won that game. And I swear to God, these people on Facebook, it's 11:16 at night. Leave me the fuck alone, people. Uh, <laughs> stop, stop messing with me about this goddamn bunk bed. They want uh, that bed. your bunk bed in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, I was I was walking past the back, back of your apartment. I saw the bunk bed. Do you think I could get it? How how is New Orleans the five seed? Like when did this? I don't know. Uh, but New well, Orleans, say, I think what they're nine and one or something. I mean, well, you play bad teams, three. you win. Seven, three, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they've been I mean, well above five hundred <laughs> since the All Star break. So. I'm going to go Portland, but I swear to God, if Dame, Portland. if you're listening, Dame, even <laughs> Middleton, you too. Brooke, calm the fuck down, right? <laughs> do what you're supposed to do and lose to this team, right? Don't, Wait, who, who are you picking? I'm, pay, I'm picking New Orleans. Oh, okay. I'm just saying okay. that I don't want Milwaukee. I, do, I don't want anybody in Milwaukee playing hero ball. Yes. And just <clears throat> yeah. going off. And fucking I mean, oh. Giannis did play. He played forty six minutes. He had tw- he had a triple double. Oh, that's right. Yes, he uh, but did. you know, yeah, he when did. it counted, yeah, remember he when he drove to the play. hoop and he missed the layup, and then yeah. Dame had a couple of shots that he missed, and um, you know the Lakers said, yeah, he did. and then when when Anthony Davis outdoes you, and you're supposed to be a top three player in the league, whatever. I will say, yeah. apparently. Probable, Giannis is listed as probable, as well as Middleton. Questionable, Patrick Beverly. Just putting that out there. Let's move on. Anybody gonna change their bet? (laughs) Absolutely not. I'm gonna stay where I'm at. We're all going down the ship. Let's go. (laughs) All right. Uh, Let's go to Friday night. We have the Suns at the Thunder. Um, I'll go first here. Give me the Thunder at home. They just lost to Houston at home. Um, taking on a, a much worse, not as hot Phoenix team. Uh, they should. I know that they, they let us down last week. But they cannot possibly. There's no way they can let us down again. Give me the Thunder. <laughs> That's to go ahead. So you said that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, is SGA okay? Is he alright? No, is he no, no, he's out. He's uh, out. He, he may be back for the game, but let's see if I'm not mistaken. He's working on that no Nintendo what deal. Sucks about the, the yeah, he is. Man. Yeah, they're hurt, and we, they always come back when we don't think. They're uh, right, right, literally every week. This is what happens. <laughs> give us a pick there, Potato Head. Come on. Uh, uh, give me the guns. I'm going to stick with my guns. Yeah, I mean, he's okay. out until the 29th, at least the 29th, and maybe longer. And when are we playing this game? It's 29th. 29th. <laughs> okay. I love, I, love, I, love, I love the NBA. 
Right now, like, you know, if you're trying to make money on NBA bets, I understand why Donna, he did what he did. I'm just saying this is bullshit. <laughs> um, I'm, listen, I'm not taking Oklahoma City after what they just did to me last week. I'm not doing it. Understandable. Fuck that team. At some point, the United States infrastructure is going to hit their ass. It's hitting everybody else. It's going to hit them at some point. Uh, I'll bet on that. Uh, Otani's ex-interpreter. Put money on that. Uh, so I'm going to go with Phoenix because they might get their ass beat by Denver, but they're still a good team. They're hot and cold. I know that. But Kevin Durant, please, you love the Sonics. Put it to your old team, the Oklahoma <laughs> City Thunder. Please, sir, do it for me. God bless. All right, G-Money. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going with Phoenix. Um, Damn it. Right now, they're, they're up by seven, I think, over uh, Denver. And and if SGA isn't playing, they don't have they don't have that really that, that scoring option. Because Chet Holmgren is not a scoring option. Right now, he's a better... You know, he, he's a better bull bull. Um... He can block. He can get some rebounds, but he doesn't get a lot of rebounds. I mean, if you take a look at him, I think he averages like nine rebounds a game. Um, but the yeah, I mean, you've got power four. You got you've got guards that can a- average nine boards a game. Um, he, I'm glad he put on some weight from last year. Probably needs to put on another forty, fifty pounds if he could. Um, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, he does. He I needs dated to put on girls some in high school. I dated girls in high school that weighed more than, than these people. Like, and they were like 17 oh, years I old. I mean, like five foot. Like, come on. They weighed more than these people. Stop it, Gary. I know what you're going to say. Stop it. That was a bad segue. <laughs> take the so, so the Suns are going to win, is what you're saying. Suns are going to win. <laughs> Don't take the bait. That's a bad it was joke. Just the heifer carousel. Don't, don't do it to me. Heifer carousel. Don't, don't do it to me. You know. I, knew, I knew you were gonna say that. I knew. It's like Listen, just more heifers in high school. I'm on my be now, but I'm not well, high school. five foot and one seventy. Yeah, yeah. That's a big yeah. girl. That's a well, big that's girl. Thirty-eight. Not when they were eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but okay. anyway, yeah. So all right. Let's go to walk right into that. <laughs> you should have seen how big T Money's eyes got when I made that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. Damn it. Sunday afternoon, we have the Cavs going to Denver. Let me make this easy. Is anybody taking Cleveland? No. 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 Okay. That's good. There we go. We just took good, some time back. Good gave up. team play. There we go. <laughs> right. Take that, Nestor, in the bunk bed. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Dallas, <laughs> Sunday night at the Red Hot Rockets. <laughs> Nestor, who do you like here? <laughs> do you want the Red Hot Rocket or do you want the ice cold raps? How have they won 10 in a row? <laughs> How? <laughs> were they like two and twenty-four at one point? Weren't they? <clears throat> they I were think they very were. bad. They might be exaggerating, but they were mm-hmm. very bad. And then dinner. March came around, and our sorrows were their triumphs. So there's that. And who are they playing? Uh, the Mavs. They beat the Thunder just now in overtime. Oh what is going man, on? that is. Who's going first on that one? This is Nestor. I want Dallas. Give me Dallas. I don't give a fuck about uh, uh, the sure. late rotate tuck. Give me Dallas. Okay. Malin? All right. I'm taking Dallas for one reason. Now, first of all, at some point, Houston's going to have a problem beyond Apollo 13. Okay. okay. Um, They've won 10 in a row, but Dallas, who is a superior team, we would all agree that Dallas is the better team, right? They're 9-1 in their last 10, and they've won 5 in a row. So they're both hot. 
So you got the Battle of Texas. Uh, they want us all to leave them alone unless there's a national emergency. Then they want all this government funding. But on this moment, we're all going to pay attention. <laughs> we're going to see Dallas beat Houston. G money. Yeah, uh, I I can't see not taking Dallas. I think the last time that they well, not the last time they played. It might have been the last time. Let me check. Cause I was looking at something here. Um, <laughs> I know that Donjic didn't play in one of the games that they played in, and they only won by, and Houston only won by six. And when when Donjic and Kyrie Irving both played in, Irving's great with playing on a flat court because it's flat, so he knows. Um, they grounding. They beat Houston handily, and, and yeah, Houston is playing well. They they really are. I think they're getting it together, um, but. Man, you know, you look at Dallas, and when Kyrie and uh, Luca are, are on, you're not stopping them. You're, you're definitely not stopping them. Even with freaking <laughs> white chocolate coaching them. There we go. I'm going down. I'm going down with the ship this week, boys. Give me the Rockets to win this game. Oh shit, he's taking the Rockets. They are oh. on fire. Ime Udoka has said he's he's pulling the Celtics when they were terrible in the first half, and in the second half of the year, he has them just just running at it. And they're at home. They're not going to do anything long term, but right now, they are the best team. In the NBA as of the the month of March, so Jaylen, take the I Rockets. Just want to let you know, you know Jalen. If I end up <laughs> one game better than you, <laughs> the ride or die in five. If I'm back on top, it's because of Dallas and Houston. <laughs> That's where it's <laughs> it, it can't possibly. Well, the Thunder is the other option, so yes. I love it. It's not going to be the Thunder. <laughs> Um, I just love how there's four of us. Houston's 10 and 0. And Jalen mm -hmm. is talking himself into picking Houston as he's making the pick. I don't know that we could be more disrespectful to a team that's 10 and 0 on this show, but it's Houston. Like, it is. It's Houston. I mean, it's whatever. Like, the one thing Houston is known for is space, and Elon Musk is doing it better than you. So what do you want from me? <laughs> so, <laughs> just, I don't Can know. Can I just say, a team that is colder, the Raptors have lost 12 games in a row. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty bad. I mean, that's Canada for you. That's why they're making <laughs> prop bets. I mean, they, 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 and when you look at the teams they beat, I mean, they beat, beat Phoenix. They beat somebody. Okay, you know. Beat beat San Antonio. Beat the old man and and the Clippers. They beat Portland. Everybody beats Portland. They beat San Antonio again. Okay, yeah. Who hasn't beaten San Antonio? Detroit. Detroit's the only team that hasn't beat San Antonio. Maybe the Raptors. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe Canada. They beat Washington. I mean, who cares? They beat Washington twice. Oh, who cares? They beat Utah. They beat Portland again. Okay. Yeah, that's an impressive 10 and 0. Impressive. Ah. Let's go, Houston. All right. Last. I think they're right outside the bubble. Right. Last game Tuesday night. Another one of these Tuesday night heat games. Knicks at Miami. G money. We're gonna start with you. Oh, appreciate I'm just going with. I'm just going with the Knicks because every time I pick Miami, <laughs> they fucking lose. It's like Nestor goes, "They're not a good team. They're just not a good team." <laughs> and, I, and, and I disregard what he says, and I pick them anyway. And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> got to be right. They're not a good team." And the Knicks are on a run too. I mean, we <laughs> talk about Houston being on a run, playing crappy teams. The Knicks are on a run too. And the Knicks have one of the best defenses in the league, surprisingly enough. They do. Yeah, I'm going to agree. 
the Knicks have, like Jim might just said, one of the best defenses in the league. And Nestor's been trying to tell us every week that the Heat are not a good team. And for whatever reason, we're just not listening to him. So we're going to listen to him this week. And uh, I'm not getting Golden State warrior this week. So give me the Knicks on the road on a Tuesday night. And when I come in 0-5 next week, I'll know exactly where I went wrong. So it's all good. Go ahead, Nestor. <laughs> um, yeah, no. My Miami Heat just inconsistent in the regular season. They're waiting to turn on the Jets, so give me the Knicks. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would just like to update everybody that I'm up to 192 messages. Uh, apparently, in the new camp of West of Chapel area, there are some thirsty-ass people for a bunk bed. Most of them want me to deliver it to them. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll give you guys an update next You come week. install it and sleep in it. Uh, <laughs> it's sleep. But uh, I'm, ta- I- I'm taking the Knicks. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. That might be the funniest thing Ness has ever said. Uh, the, uh, I- I'm taking the Knicks. They're 8 and 2 out of their last 10. The Heat are 4 and 6. Um, I'm more interested in the fact that Phoenix is up by 13 on Denver right now. Mm hmm. I mean, Mm-hmm. Damn. Like we all shit on Phoenix during our contender pretender and all talked about <laughs> Jesus. So that's great. Oh, so you said you are taking the Knicks. I'm taking the Knicks. I, like the Joker. I mean, I know he's from Serbia, but he sweats so much. There is. I would be lying. If I said I wasn't just looking for your bunk bed on Facebook so I could hit you up, see if you can install it. <laughs> <Damn> it. <laughs> Be 193. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. They're like, I get a message. Hi, is it available? Hey, can I pick it up right now? Yeah. Hey, can you deliver it? Hey, can you give me a microwave with the bunk bed? Like, can we do a package deal? So I gotta come get it. What are we? Yeah. Um. I just want the bunk bed gone. <laughs> you sleep. Crazy ass people. It's why people just put it outside. It's just, <laughs> it's just, just let. You know I mean, if I put this bunk bed outside, it'd be like a scene out of The Walking Dead, like zombies <laughs> crowding this motherfucker. <laughs> Mad like Max. Like, in a tank in season <laughs> one. Like, it would just be fucking wild. This is insane. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this week's episode of After Further Review. Uh, just to recap the Ride or Die 5 real quick. <clears throat> we are all taking the Pelicans to win. Uh, everyone else is taking the Suns to win besides myself. Taking the Thunder. All taking the Nuggets to beat the Cavs. I am taking the Rockets. Everybody else is taking the Mavs. And then we're all taking the Knicks to beat the Heat. So. It's going to be so bad. Either I'm going to be screwed or I'm going to be slightly better. This is the week that I'm supposed to go 5 0. If history. (laughs) Good, bad, good. (laughs) And by next week, Malin will. He's sleeping in someone else's home in this bunk bed once he in- <laughs> installs <my> it. <laughs> I'm a package deal. He installed. You get the bunk bed. Right now, I'm... Install it. I'm sleeping in the goddamn thing. Yeah. Is it possible for you to model that bunk bed? Okay. First of all, no, I'm not modeling. And second of all, I'm not moving it up to Seattle from Tampa. <laughs> Could you could you include a, a good bottle of whiskey, perhaps, with that? Some incentive for me to come and get it. You get some messages from Dream Money saying, "Where are you located?" <laughs> I'll get you a a bottle of uh, oh, what is it? Uh, it's all the way down on the bottom shelf. Uh, Evan Williams. <laughs> I'll get you a regular bottle of Benchmark. How does that <laughs> just, just a good old stick to your. I think Angie tried to sell a bottle of Benchmark on there, and they started a group chat. 
<laughs> yeah, there's probably 200 people right now in a group chat. Like, is this motherfucker actually going to give this bet away? Like, like, <laughs> the funny thing is, is I already told the second person he could pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know how to turn this fucker off. All these people are just going to keep going. <laughs> I'm killing the battery on my phone. People, stop it. <laughs> So, so All right, folks. I'll come pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> if he doesn't, I'll let the two hundred of you know that it's still here. Right. Yeah. At that point, just put it outside. Say, first person who gets it, mm. they got it. Uh. All right. I want to thank you all for watching. Mother- thank you all for this listening. Gary, Gary found the goddamn listing. <laughs> 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 and he just wrote me how often has it been slept in I don't actually need bunk beds can I just have one of the beds <laughs> okay we need to go before I start making more appropriate comments. <laughs> thank you all for tuning in this week. Uh, big shout out to G Money for joining us for another great second half. Um, shout out to NBA J for chiming in in the chat. And uh, yeah, shout out to everybody that's been messing with our videos as of late, whether they're on YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram. So appreciate the support. Uh, we will see you all next week for 182. We're getting closer and closer to the draft in our draft special, so be sure to mark your calendar. Folks, have a great week. See you all 182. Peace out. Peace. Uh,